Okay, hey YouTube, Todd here again, another edition of Todd Talk. First off, thanks for watching. Wanted to uh, today jump into a topic uh, which you see on your screen there that I hate to admit I've only recently learned about in the last two weeks or so, and that is top tier fuels or the top tier fuel program. And I actually kind of stumbled on it. This program has been around since 2004. So for 16 years, I've driven and not uh, heard or, or known anything about this program. And the only way I found it was actually researching uh, content for upcoming videos on troubleshooting the dreaded P0420 and 430 codes, which are uh, the catalyst codes of death, inefficient catalyst codes which brought me to this site, which I'll link in the description of smogstats.com. On this site, there is, and this is basically everything you'd want to know about uh, emissions and uh, cats and everything else. Um, but they, they mentioned in a uh, kind of a prevention and maintenance section, the same three word phrase that I've read hundreds of times, uh, in, in every owner's manual is to use a quote-unquote high-quality fuel. Uh, so pause that just a second. The thing with the owner's manuals is that's all they say. And turns out that's all really they can say. They kind of got their hands spanked uh, in the, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s. And that's, uh, won't go off on that tangent. But um this site, Smogstats, did go further and, and suggested top-tier top, top -tier fuels and provided the webpage. So I immediately come here and uh, start fishing around the website, learning more about the uh, top-tier fuels and, you know, kind of feeling dumbfounded at the same time. So what, what are they? And I think this slide here explains it the best. It's a fuel quality program there's not a top tier store you know with the top tier name on it or anything it, it's a program it's a, an idea uh, that was started by automakers uh, enforced and monitored by automakers and then supplied by various fuel retailers across the country Canada and South America so I'm like okay well that's uh, you know that's a lot more than I had because before this Right. The only thing I had my working definition of a high quality fuel was this was, uh, you know, uh, a newer store with brand X really didn't matter the brand. But the big thing was the condition of the tanks. So, uh, you know, these are newer tanks. Presumably they didn't leak. Um, and yeah, and, and knock on wood uh, just did on my head. Uh, since I've been driving at 15, and I'm 54 now, uh, I have avoided getting bad gas. Now, you know, I can get it tomorrow following that MO, but I didn't have anything else as far as, you know, detergency levels or what, you know, the additives do or don't do, you know, just not getting bad gas. Now, uh, I have something else, and that's why I'm excited about this. This is... This actually gives me something to hang my hat on to as to what is a uh, a high quality fuel. So, and what what is you know the big thing? What are these uh, what do these fuels do? Well, here's a perfect example, and this is actually this is actually a picture from a 2016 uh, AAA study, which I'll be doing uh, a lot more content on. Uh, so, new valve. Uh, and this is 4,000 miles simulated runtime. Top tier fuel, non top tier fuel. That difference is 19 fold. Okay. So the top tier uh, intake valve is 19 times cleaner than non top tier. And for you premium uh, kind of snobby people that say, oh, I only run premium, so I don't have to worry about top tier, this was premium. Okay. Both of these were premium. So you might want to rethink that. Um, their additive package uh, to be a top tier retailer is uh, is much higher in detergents and other additives than uh, than the EPA standard that was set back in 1996. 
and is still in effect today in 2020, even though uh, engine technology has changed uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's, you know, engines are, um, I don't know, tighter tolerances and are asked to do, to do more with less or to make more use of their, uh, their displacement. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and that's kind of why the top tier f uh, fuel program was uh, conceived. So which, uh, which automakers? Well, here they are at the bottom of the screen. And of course, I was uh, immediately impressed by this, right? You know, right off the top, you have two premium worldwide brands in BMW and Mercedes. Uh, and then you have Audi and VW to round out the Germans, I believe. I don't think there's another German uh, manufacturer. You have all of our uh, domestics in Ford, GM, and Fiat Chrysler America, which kind of also goes to further represent Europe. Uh, two heavy hitters from uh, Japan and Toyota and Honda. Uh, kind of surprised to not see uh, Mazda and Nissan on there. Uh, maybe they'll come on board. And then down uh, at the bottom, you have Detroit Diesel and Navistar to you know to represent the uh, heavy equipment uh, commercial type side. So yeah, that's a pretty pretty impressive list. Uh, so where do you find this stuff? Where can you find it? Um, we'll just go to their page here. If I can get it to open. And we will go ahead and just filter for uh, the U.S. I don't know why Wisconsin's broken out. And look at a list of retailers. And it's pretty impressive also. I mean, right at the top of the list, 76. Uh, it's an, an international brand. All of them I'm not familiar with. Amico, obviously international. BP, international. Uh, Sitgo, I believe, is international. Chevron, international. Conoco, international. Uh, Costco was interesting or is interesting because Sam's uh, Wholesale uh, nor Murphy's are on here, which are at a lot of uh, Walmart stores, but Costco is. Uh, let's see, some other ones. Exxon, uh, definitely international. Uh, heard of some of these. I'm not real familiar with them. Um, Marathon, you can you can find some stores in my area. They're kind of uh, sporadic. Mobile, the same way. Phillips 66, the same way. Now, QT and Quick Trip are the same uh, the same retailer. They are a regional convenience store group. Uh, they've recently expanded. I have to give a shout out to my son. He works for them um, and has for several years. And they've just expanded out into the Austin, Texas market. QT and Chevron were the first two retailers to actually jump on board with this. So shout out to the QT management and Chevron, of course, too. They're just a much bigger company. Um, but shout out to QT specifically to their management uh, for having the, the corporate responsibility, I think, to recognize this. Uh, and besides, you know, these, these engine or these fuels burning are uh, keeping engines cleaner they also burn cleaner so there's an, an emissions um, bonus to this too uh let's see going on down shell yeah international uh sinclair i don't know if they're international they, they're pretty big i've seen some of their um some of their uh stations texco obviously international uh valero is pretty big i think they're based out in texas um, and maybe even more surprising are the stations you don't see on here. Um, there's not any major brands I see that are that are missing from this, but some of the some of the regional ones, say for example in my area, Dodge's uh, convenience store group and Spinks, um, they uh, they typically have a very very cheap gas, and neither one of them are on here. Um, and, and other little uh, little retailers uh, here and there. Uh, and I have actually purchased fuel at both Dodges and Spinks, um, mainly because of price, but then also the, uh, you know, the newer facility MO or whatever, that they looked, you know, kind of looked a part of a, of a quality fuel. Uh, so 
let's get back here. So founding a station. Well, yeah, let me get to this one. So I just have my town punched in here with a uh, five mile radius. Um, and you can, you know, narrow or whatever. So within the center of uh, Easley, which is, uh, that's a medium sized town, I suppose, in my state. Greenville, of course, next door is much bigger. But there's uh, six stations, and these are uh, all, all but one are like major brands. I think there's two Sitgo's, there's a 76, another Sitgo, a Shell, another Shell, uh, and then this QT, which is uh, really convenient for me. And it turns out, really, I guess, uh, going back to their homepage, really following my MO, just kind of looking for this generally maybe 70 percent maybe even 75 percent of the time Not unknowingly i have used top tier fuels but now i know you know like i said i have something to hang my hat on i've uh, forwarded it forward forwarded this to all my friends and family uh, strongly recommend it um and uh, yeah, that's that's all that'll be going in my vehicles from here, from here forward. Now, if you're curious as to what a retailer has to do to become, uh, you know, to become part of the top tier program, this is I downloaded this from the site. Anybody can look. This uh, this is it. Uh, the most current revision was uh, last December. Uh, this gives, and you notice all this ASTM stuff. Okay, you'll see this, uh, and then especially in my follow-up video. That's the American Society for Testing and Materials. They have all these different industry standard tests, specifically this uh, D6201, which the uh, AAA used, and that's actually where, I don't remember if I said that or not, but that's actually where this picture comes from comes from is the 2016 AAA study and I'll pull it up real quick uh, I won't stay on this long because I'm gonna do another video going into a lot more detail on this study and I'll go ahead and tell you I, I see some I see some problems with the study I think it could have gone a lot deeper and answered a lot more questions but the, the study itself has, has posed questions for me as well. Why didn't they do this? Or why did they do it, you know, that way? Why didn't they do this, that, and the other? So we'll delve into that. I will say, however, overall, it has not changed my, uh, my opinion of, of top tier. Uh, and I still use it in my vehicles and, uh, and plan to. I just, uh, you know, this, this AAA study could have been, could have been, should have been better in my opinion. Um, but back to what they have to do, it's quite a bit. Uh, this is a technical, I mean, you know, anybody can read it and kind of understand it. Uh, but of course, and especially if you're in the fuel business, yeah, a lot of this stuff will be ringing true. But I think my point in showing you this is uh, if, if you're a retailer, you don't just pay them $100 or $1,000 or whatever, and you get a little sticker to put on your pump. You actually have to prove it through an independent lab that your additives do what, not what you say they do, but what top tier, uh, what, the, what the top tier program and what they're looking for, kind of back to this slide, at least, you know, this is just one part of it, but on the intake, yeah, they're looking for this. They're absolutely not looking for that. Uh, and if, if that's what you come up with, then you're not going to be in their program. And they also do audits, uh, random audits to uh, to make sure not only you know that you keep keep up to snuff, if you will. But um, I think that's about all I have for top tier. I think it's uh, I think it's a great uh, resource. I mean, if the if these guys are saying, in my opinion, that the the 1996 EPA standard is not enough to keep their engines clean and efficient, then, you know, who better to know? They're the ones that are designing and building the engines. If they say, they're need, you know, we need better fuel, or they need better fuel to keep their engines up to snuff, then, you know, yeah. Um, the last question I'll, I'll say, because I don't think it mentions anywhere on the site, is price. Uh, and are these 
uh, top tier fuels any more expensive than uh, the non top tier. According to the AAA study, three cents is what they found, three cents per gallon. Uh, and they surveyed fuel prices, I think, in Texas or uh, a part of Texas for a year. So back to this little map, right? Now, look, th of course, this is only showing top tier. There's other uh, fuel retailers around, but basically using my previous model, even some of these stores are going to be weeded out because they're older stores with uh, older tanks and so on and so forth. But you filter those out and you filter out the, <clears throat> the, um, I don't know, the El Cheapo gas that, you know, you just, you just kind of wonder, you know, when you're on by it and they're 10 cents cheaper than everybody else. Uh, I've kidded people and said, yeah, they don't, they don't charge you for the water. Surely they don't actually put water in the fuel, but it, uh, you know, a part of you says, yeah, you know, that's, that's probably not the best thing to be putting in your car. But by the time I do that, anyway, my, my normal filters of older tanks and the El Cheapo gases, this is pretty much, you know, kind of what I'm left with anyway. Uh, and the three cents, they're all right there together. Actually, this uh, this QT that I fuel out a lot, it's not the cheapest. There may be some of those El Cheapos that are a couple of cents slower. But in reality, I don't use them anyway. So... You know, they're all basically right in line. Um, but anyway, I'll follow up. We'll look at this AAA study next in, uh, in great detail. And maybe have some, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll come up with any answers, but at least pose some questions. But either way, uh, I think triple or the, uh, the top tier fuel program is the way to go. It should at least give you something else to consider. Uh, as a responsible owner, not only for your uh, engine, but for uh, emissions as well. And uh, please let me know your thoughts. i uh, love to hear from you. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another video.